All right, so today is Monday, and I'm calling this trade the go jump off a bridge trade. Ran into a little problem today. Well, first of all, it wasn't a great day all the way around. First of all, today was a losing day. We took our stop out mark, 100 bucks, 105 bucks. So that sucks. But even worse than that is that I, I added in another account today. So I was, I was started trading two accounts, my main account that I've been using. And then I had a little think or swim. I had another little account in there with like six grand in there. And I thought, hey, let's add this to the mix. So I put the trade on and everything looked good. But then there was an issue when I tried to close it out for a loss. This little, this little uh, warning window came up saying something about the pattern day trading rule. And I totally forgot about the pattern day trading rule because I haven't I haven't traded that account in like a long time. So anyway, I got out of the trade okay. But I got to figure out how to handle that. How do you handle the pattern day trading rule with a small account? And I'm thinking this has got to be like a, problem out there for a lot of folks because I mean not everyone has $25,000 or more in an account where they don't have to worry about that. So how does a small account handle zero DTE trades where you're opening and closing the same trade on the same day which we're doing like we're opening a zero DTE trade in the morning then we're closing it later out we're closing it out. So how does the majority of traders out there handling that? So I'm inviting I'm, I'm begging I'm on my knees I'm inviting you to uh, if you know if you know of any solutions or like how, how this is being dealt with with other traders or how you're dealing with it please leave them in the comments below that'd be super helpful for me i want to try to figure this out i mean zero dte strategy would be great for small accounts but we run into that problem so how do we overcome that does anyone out there know if you do please let me know in the comments or email me and we'll uh, i'll make a video on how to how to fix that or how to handle that because that's like that, that could be a big issue right that a lot of people must be dealing with out there so i'm just gonna let this video play we'll just go through the whole trade and then like towards the end of it you'll see that problem i run into when i try to exit out of the the smaller account a little window pops up and until that window popped up i had totally forgotten all about this thing stupid me i can't believe i forgot that but Anyway, the main thing is I got to, I want to, I'd like to find a solution for us. So if you know of a solution, email me or leave it in the comments below or call me or send a smoke signal and we'll figure it out. So anyway, here's the video from the beginning for today's trade, which I'm calling the go jump off a bridge trade. All right, here we are Monday morning. I'm going to look to get into this trade right off the bell here today, potentially. Let me see if I can get this to come up to 80, 80 or more. I may just try to see if I can get filled here at 80. It's showing 75. Let me go. Say 80. Come on, 80. Okay. We're right under there. We got 77. Looking for 80. While we wait for this to get filled, if we can get it filled at 80, let's just tune into the room here. This is Rob. I mean, let's just film into the, let's just tune into the room here. Eavesdrop on our, oh, there we go. We just got filled. Okay, hold on. All righty then. So let's come over here. So we got that at 80. Let me turn this down. Okay, so we got in this at 80. So there's our position. We're already up a little bit. Nice. And I'm just going to go ahead and set my exit order right now. So I'll say analyze opposite order. So on this one, we need to get buy it back at 30 bucks to get our 50. So I'm going to create that order. Firm and send. See it working over there. Okay. 
and we're off and running. Now I'm also going to try to put this into another account, uh, a smaller account. That's the new, that's the new deal here. I'm going to try to see if I can put it into the second account and the exact same trade, hopefully the exact same price. Let's see what it's at right now. 75. Okay. So we're going to try to get 80 on this. Hopefully we can get 80. I'm juggling between two accounts now on this one. Uh, we might get 80 on that. I'll just let that work. Well, let's see if I get filter real quick. This is a secondary account. This is like a smaller, a smaller account. Yeah, I think we'll get filled there. Come on, 80. Give it to me. There we go. So we got 80 on this account as well. So then I'm just going to set the exact same stop loss or the exit order, the profit target order, um, create duplicate order 30. Let's come over here and make sure that it's working. Okay, so this is account two. And let's go back to account one. We'll just monitor the trade from account one. Okay. So here we are. And while this is working, working and making us some money, Let's, uh, we'll tune back into the room with Rod for a few minutes for a little bit, and then we'll see, uh, how that goes. If it gets a little too boring, well, maybe we'll put something else on. So let me just pull this window in here. Just kind of re-navigate this. So that's our trade right there. Our P&L, that little white number. And... Here's the room. There's a whole section that talks about orienting yourself to what these levels are and the videos and stuff you need to uh, you need to watch. But uh, welcome. Uh, the T line's a 233 EMA though, so it's a 233 EMA, and essentially I only apply and use it on 30 minute and higher time frames. So this is the, the T-line here, and it's just a quick way to establish a sense of trend. You're welcome. But make sure you do check out this. Uh, check out the notes area, and that'll provide some additional additional stuff for you there. All right, the good news is that uh, we haven't ruined our day on our our longs here on crude oil, but still has potential. Bonds creeping up a little bit. Gold doing a whole lot of nothing. This will be a candle to see if we get a break above, close above. All right, Nazi on its way to where we'll be getting short over here on some of the prop programs. I'm actually going to throw in the first short over here. I'm getting pretty extended. 
Let's join the ass. These are new highs. You can see that uh, as long as Apple's holding up, finally they bought some Apple and Meta. It's been the first day in a little while, and of course Nvidia. So we've been talking about how long you could hold that beach ball meaningfully underwater. See if we get a little scalp off here or not. It can't be this easy on this Dow for all morning. So at some point they have to go down, scare the children a little bit. Had four round trips of about 30 points there up to uh, developing value area high, 37, 613. Is anyone else playing that uh, the, in that direction? Now crude oil's really starting to decline. I could foresee the future. I told you. We've Order filled. Ruin me. All right, one more ad here. This has been a big move. Pretty big move. And the next one will be at T line. Got a decent amount of uh, decent amount of divergence here today. S and P and Nasdaq up, Dow and Russell down. Here comes a Russell. So I'll be doing an ad on the uh, the Dow there at 527s. Oh, I need another need another one right here. All right, three lot now on crude oil. Come to butthead. Come to butthead. Boeing is now down $22. So you don't have to look much further than that to understand the divergence here in the Dow. That's a big move. All right, graceful exit here on one of these NASDAQ. Four Order filled. The Dow. That allows me to put another target in here. Oh, it's getting a little, getting a little, uh, getting a little jiggy there. It's
it's getting it's getting it's getting kind of hectic it's getting it's getting it's getting kind of hectic All right, a little bit of a reversal, reversal from the S&P. Found some uh, sellers there around 47, 47-ish, up to 48s. Stay on the count that's having the most trouble. Come on, Dow. A teeny little bounce, teeny. Oh, so small. Order filled. Getting close to T-line on the NASDAQ. T-line prior session high, that's where I would be looking to uh, get involved. So the rates uh, dropping a little bit helps the NASDAQ, if you want to believe that narrative, but we're creeping up a little bit here. We got a decent amount of room to go. I would be having my offer zone here on the ZN come in right like here. So this is where connect the, someone asked the other day about the, um, about the uh, face ripper. Do, 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 do. Hold on a second here. Um, add one here. Try to give us a little move there. A little move there. Let's get one more, one more pop from the Dow, just to make me feel good. Yeah, we got a little ways to go on this uh, opening candle here on the NASI. Look at that. Look at that. But six tens, I'm going to add at uh, just a T-line. T-line's always level. The challenge with T-line is it's meh. Don't mean nothing on volume over the last couple days, but that's okay. Got to be a believer. I'd like to get an extreme turn sell, but we, you know, you can't, can't always get. You can't always get what you want.
Okay, got a uh, graceful exit action there. I don't like that one. Let's get this looking. I think I have the replicator screwed up. That is not a surprise. Not a surprise at all. Yep, see these are out of sync. Let's try to put these back in sync. There we go. All right. Graceful exit going on here. Hit it. There we go. Down a whopping 20 bucks over here. We can handle it. Okay, I'll turn it on a little bit. Okay. We can handle it. Come on, crude oil, be less sucky. Be less sucky for me. All right, gonna take one there. And now officially see if we can get to 505s on the Dow. Who's crushing the Dow on these little 30 point moves? You guys crushing? No, Rod, I'm getting spanked short in the NASDAQ. You suck. This trading strategy sucks. Didn't participate. Well, it's been in a little, little uh, range there, as you can see. Nazi back up. So we're going uh we're going six ten oh six thirteen half. I don't know exactly. I'm gonna go six six tens. There we go. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. That was a very profound statement, huh? Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. Here we go, marching back up. Marching back up. Order filled. Did anyone see this thing from uh, Top Step? Their emotional trade journal? Uh, I'm not exactly sure if this is useful, but I haven't heard anyone talk about how to use it, but they have mental, physical, and emotional. Mental, physical, and emotional. I think a lot of people would say that their mental and emotional state are similar. Before the trade, entry, during, exit, after. The challenge with this is, well, at least the stuff we're doing here, I suspect most of you don't have as many trades per day as I have during here in the room. You probably don't need that, but a little bit more active 
I think I, I think I saved that already, so we got that. Plus, they have their their trader lingo. I, it reminded me to try to go find my glossary. Go find my glossary. Okay. All right, bought more of that. Let's buy them. Let's buy this here. There we go. Nazi coming in a little bit. Dow dropping. Dow dropping. All right. Don't do this in your combines. I'm going to buy a full Dow over here. You know why I'm going to buy a full Dow over here? Because they don't give you a choice. So if we'll see if we get one on there. Nazi went right back up. Right back up, Buttercup. all emotional tragedy when you're feeling that the trade is sucking tragedy all right let's check in with crude oil just so that we can see that at least it's not going down anymore come on baby make me look like a hero remember we're going to try to get another one on short here it's six tens Six tens. Steve's Jomo in so far. I don't blame you. It's not bad. Like I said, that's what the purpose of the trade room is. You can see a donkey push buttons like a drunk monkey. Let's combine. Let's combine uh, animals there. Every once in a while, I get on uh, donkey Instagram, where I just watch videos of. People hugging donkeys. All right, I'm going to take a graceful exit here on... Uh, I already closed it out on the other one, so let's get a graceful exit going on here. And... Uh, oh, look at that Dow, baby. Join the bid. Let's go to this Dow and make sure we don't lose any money on it since it's a big contract. See if I can put a sell stop in here. You think this is going to work? I don't think so. Let me see. Stop sell. There we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. Drag that up a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty close to price. Let me see. See if we can make a hundred bucks here. Hundred out. Hundred out. Hundred out. Okay, we're out. That was fun though. Now up sixty-eight dollars. This account is so I cheated on you guys a little bit because this is only supposed to be micros, but you saw me do. A mini there. That's because I, in my own defense, they don't allow you to trade the micro Dow over here, on this dumb thing. So mostly we're going to make money. Trying to get short the Nasdaq in here it keeps going higher. Order filled. Damn. Damn. Oh man, just. Bam! Hit it. All right. So this time on this four lot on the Dow, I don't know. How much are we up on the Dow? We're up pretty nicely on the Dow. That is correct. X does not currently allow for a micro Dow. They also don't allow for ZN and a bunch of other instruments. Uh, you can't trade it on this platform. So it's not available. All that's available. I was trying to remember when we first started this thing. I was like, what's the deal with this? Uh, by the way, why not just... Uh, 
Throw some good money after bad there. New highs, 615s. Um, all you can choose from over here is, is just this. This is all you can choose from. So it's kind of a bummer. I ain't going to lie. Not loving that. So they're starting off this week. They're like, that was enough, enough selling in the NASDAQ. In NASDAQ, we trust. I'd like to get this Dow down here to like 470s, 450s, so I could get a little bit more inventory. We got one more minute left in this candle. Definitely expansive. Damn, look at this. Starting to leave a mark now. All right, I'm gonna sell one of these DAOs again. Just keep keep going at it. See if we get another. Gotta do a buy stop there, and then new high of day by like six ticks or something. Don't do it. I think it's going to tick me out and go lower, but that's okay. Or maybe go higher. I'll get another get another one on at a better price. Do we have an extreme turn? We do have an extreme turn sell now on the Nazi finally. Extreme turn sell on the Nazi. Took a little bit of my inventory there. Took a little of my inventory. Uh, I don't know what happened here. We're out of sync. There we go. Now we should just be back in sync. Does it say we're in sync? Yes. By the way, what was our level? 654s. We got to 635s so far. I don't know. It's almost like this stuff works. We'll see. See if see if Dum Dum can stay lucky. So live, I've made $190 on the Dow long and lost $280 on the MNQ short. Again, I'm not very good at math, but I think that puts me down a little bit. Should I wake up Zach right now? Uh, you can probably wait like 20 minutes or so. Uh. All right. We're going to get involved a little bit here for the first time on our Apex Avals. Apex Avals. Let's see here. And we're going to want to go right here. And this should be five. And the plus twos are 631s. So we'll just sell the plus twos. By the way, guys, see that ZN just. Uh, move its way up there this should be a uh we need to make this an offer zone it 
doesn't seem like there's anything more miserable than shorting Nasdaq strength. Can you think of any think of anything more miserable? Order filled. Come on, Dow. Come on, Dow. You can do it. Here we go. Um, you can trade. Uh, you can trade. Uh, everything at top step on trade of eight and uh and ninja so the only restriction is their own platform which is a little silly i think it's a data thing for what their data agreements were to start out uh at least that's what i'm guessing Uh-oh. Can you guys still hear me? I lost the uh, audio test. Yep, okay. Temporarily lost connection to the internet here. Oh, now we lost it again. But it seems like it's a loss, it's a rhythmic related issue. Nope, it's interactive brokers. What's going on with interactive brokers? All right, so while we're in the trenches here battling this, the good fight, let's, uh, I'm going to take this off. Let's leave the room for a little bit. Let's check out Lou Elizondo. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to like convert you into the cult of my cult of UFO. This is a guy, uh, this is a podcast by Kurt Jamangle. Kurt J. Mungle. Mungle. He's great. Check us out on the site, Theories of Everything on YouTube. But this is where he's uh, interviewing this guy named Lou Elizondo. He used to work for the, he used to work for the government uh, researching UFOs and all that. And he kind of left them angry because they were hiding everything. The government was hiding UFOs. So let's check this out. Come on, Lou. Imagine everything you've been taught, whether it's through Sunday school or what our political leaders have told us turned out to be not entirely accurate. The meaning of what it means to be a human being and our place in this universe. How much of our own history do we really know? We can go back 5,000 years pretty easily. 8,000 years, things start to get a little murky. And anything much beyond that, we really have no clue about. There is documentation of these strange things in the sky going back a long, long time. I don't think we're dealing with a new phenomenon. I think we may be dealing with a new recognition and perhaps, hopefully, at some point, a new understanding. I think we've been faced with this phenomenon for quite some time. Lou Elizondo has been on the Theories of Everything podcast three times. Each of Order filled. In the description, almost every one of those appearances tends to be one of the highest rated videos of all of the Lou Elizondo appearances on different podcasts and different platforms during that period. What you're about to see are the most viewed juicy clips from those sessions in one compilation. If you'd like to watch any of these in full, the links are in the description as well as the pinned comment. 
This compilation is in preparation for a behemoth interview with Lou in person, so if you have a question for him, leave it below. Think of this whole anthology as an early Christmas gift. My name is Kurt J. Mungle, and this podcast is Theories of Everything, where we explore the topics of physics, mathematics, free will, consciousness, and AI, even God, primarily from an analytic, technical, academic perspective, but as well as starting two years ago, I've embraced a more experiential approach and interview some guests along that framework. Subscribe if this sounds interesting to you, and either way, enjoy this Best of Lou Elizondo episode. If you could start over and pursue a different educational path with the hopes of understanding UAPs more fully, what degree would you choose? I would probably start with philosophy. And why is that? Because philosophy is one of the few areas that teaches you how to think and not what to think, right? It's, it, in the topic of UAPs, it's not a matter of what, it's how, you know? How do we process the data? How, how, how does this apply to our species? Where we're going, where we're from, et cetera. Um, there's very few academic pursuits that teach somebody how to think. Most people, and, and I can tell you this from personal experience with my children, most schools teach kids what to think. And that's a problem because we've forgotten what, what, what real teaching is about. You know, I can instruct somebody on how to do something, but real teaching, real teaching is, is something different. Um, you know, a lot of the, the, the Eastern philosophies understood that, you know, it's, it's, it's not teaching somebody the, the, the specifics, it's teaching somebody how to, how to find the data themselves. Um, and I think I would probably start with that, maybe do some reading, um, on people who, who, who look at things maybe a little bit differently, right. And aren't prescribing you what to think, but more importantly, Again, how to think. Would you consider yourself to be an idealist or a materialist? And mm. if you are unsure what those words mean, no, let I me know what they are. Um, is there an option C? Hmm. Which <laughs> would be what? Mix? Can it be both <laughs> or neither? Um, yeah, that's something I've been wondering. Is there a duality between those two? There's plenty of dualities in math and physics where you think it's the option between two, but it turns out that they're equivalent ways of describing a system. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure it's a, it either or. I'm not sure they're mutually exclusive. I think, I, I, you know, I, I, my background was science. Um, you know, in, 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 in science, I found my solace, which I enjoyed. Um, you know, I, I grew up kind of a, kind of a angry young kid, had some, some tough times as a kid. Um, but, but science to me was, um, it was unwavering. Uh, she was always there for me. She never lied to me. And so uh, I, I get lost in science. And, um, you know, I, 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 I do believe in the scientific method. Um, it works. It's, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a perfect no, but it's, it's the best thing that we got right now that we know uh, to test and, and apply theories. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's something more you said about human consciousness, you know, can't prove it. There's no, no mathematical formula, no physical evidence to prove consciousness. And yet here we are having a conversation. So... Um, I think, I don't think, I don't think the two are mutually, I don't consider myself a materialist or an idealist. Um, like I said, it's, you know, I, it, when I make fun, the fact that I, you know, it's, I said, I love humanity. It's humans. I don't like, right. Um, how is that possible? Right. Because humanity is a collective of all the humans and yet, uh, but, um, probably a little bit of both, probably a little bit. I think there's an indelible aspect to the human being that is, um, that transcends physicality. Um, you know, we have a, we have a body obviously, and we have a brain and our brain is inextricably tied for metabolic processes to survive to the body. The heart has to pump blood to get blood to the brain. Otherwise the brain dies. And in the same respect, the brain is regulating all the autonomic processes for the body. So, you know, breathing, this is automatic. Thank God for most of us anyways. Uh, and, uh, and, and heartbeat and, and, and temperature and whatnot. So the, the, the brain is a biological organ, uh, organ that is inextricably tied to the overall vehicle, which is the body, and that's organic as well. But there's probably something more to the human being. There's probably something more that is um, not necessarily physical. Um, because a computer has a processor, a computer has a body, right? The laptop I'm talking to you on right now, and it's got a processor that's thinking, if you will, for the computer, but it's not a conscious living being. It's not a sentient being. 
So the question is, what is that extra component, that extra ingredient that makes us human, that makes us a living, breathing, not only animal, but truly human, what separates us from everything else on this planet? And there's that third ingredient can be described potentially in, in, in cultures as the soul or the id or the chi or what, you know, put your nom de jour you want on there. But I think a lot of people agree that there's something different. Um, case in point, the, 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 the notion of love. Um, you can't really describe it. It's hard to describe. You can't see it. You can't touch it and taste it. But it's there and it motivates a lot of people's actions. In fact, love to some degree actually works against individual survival. And yet a mother's instinct to throw herself in front of a train to save her child is almost reflexive. Um, you know, there's something there that recognizes the value of human life, human dignity. Um, I could be in a car accident and, and, and lose use of my arms and my legs, but I'm still Lou Elizondo. Um, I could suffer a traumatic brain injury and, and um, have a severe TBI and be mentally impaired, but I'm still Lou Elizondo. What makes Lou Elizondo Lou is, is something a little bit different, something that you can't really put your finger on. And so back to this duality, you know, materialist versus, a, you know, idealist, I'm probably a little bit of both because I believe in science, but I also know that there's limitations to science and there's limitations to human beings and there's limitations to you and me and everybody else. And, and that's okay. And that, that there's aspects to, to being human that are probably potentially more human than human to use an old cliche. Is there another reason outside of national security that they, they don't want you to disclose what you may disclose or they're worried you may? Yeah. I mean, what is their worry outside of them? There have been, um, you know, uh, forbidden truths we can call them if you will there have been forbidden truths in the history of not just our country but many countries uh truths that could upset a balance a balance that's been around for a long time um let me give you case in point um let's say there were some people that were doing their job by running a, a ufo program in the past uh but because certain things happened um Presidents were no longer briefed. People in Congress were no longer briefed who should have been. And now they're running an operation that's um, uh, considered rogue, but it's still an important mission. Um, turns out, you know, all of a sudden now, let's say hypothetically, the cat's out of the bag. What's going to happen to those people when, when the government realizes they were running operations, for better or for worse, um, without any oversight? without any legal oversight, right? What, what, who, who's gonna be held accountable for that? The fact that they did not brief legally like they were supposed to. <clears throat> Certain members of Congress and committees and oversight committees and, and, and the chain of command, um, that, that's potentially criminal, criminal action. Let's say, I, I've said this before, let's say you have two competing companies. You have uh, aerospace company A and aerospace company B. And aerospace company A, for whatever reason, gets a favor and some sort of really exotic game-changing material is provided to that company to do a s analysis. Meanwhile, company B, who is competing fairly, um, doesn't, uh, doesn't get that material. Turns out company A now starts getting a lot of contracts, defense contracts, and becomes a multi-billion dollar company. While company B, who never had the advantage of having that material, um, goes into bankruptcy people hundreds of people lose their jobs and stockholders lose their 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 investment um keeping in mind that both companies are supposed to be treated fairly and have fair comp competition uh when it comes to u.s government contracts now what now now what happens where's the liability and by the way now these companies are are you know doing good things for the united states um but they got there because they had an unfair advantage competitive advantage uh, potentially again i'm not i'm not uh, this is hyp hypothetical right where's the liability there you're talking to trillions and trillions of dollars worth of liability um you know and and who made those decisions to do that you know who's going to be held culpable for that uh you know security exchange commission would not be very happy to know that that two publicly company two publicly traded companies that were competing for a contract one had an unfair advantage 
the other went bankrupt. That's that that that's a problem. That's a real problem. And so you're talking about big big money interests. You're talking about things that are going into that gray world that go beyond just government interests. You're talking about banking. You're talking about um, you know some, some of the biggest names on the planet that have a lot to lose uh, or a lot to gain in hindsight. So. You know, I think we always have to be careful that that governments have always had um, interesting ties to 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 certain interests, and that's true of all governments. That's not just the U.S. That's that's everybody, um, and we need to be mindful of that. You know, because you you could be you could be um, putting some people in a very uncomfortable position, and I'm aware of that. And that's why I've been very delicate how I approach this topic. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm not trying to expose anybody and, and, and say, ah, ha, ha, gotcha, see there. Um, I'm trying to have the conversation in a collaborative, meaningful way where, where everybody wins. Nobody has to get burned, right? It's not a zero-sum game. I'm not... Hypothetically, do they view it like that? Like there's a potential where everyone can win or do they view it somewhat zero-sum? Well, I can't, I can't speak for them. Um, I can't tell you what they think. All I can tell you is what I think and, and, and my approach. And my approach is to say, look, guys... You know, we're not trying to expose anybody. This is not, I'm not trying, it's not a witch hunt, you know, despite what you may see on social media where everybody wants their pound of flesh. Um, that's not going to get us anywhere. We, we need to, to, we need to be adults about this. And we need to have a, a conversation that if you, if you really want the truth to come out, you better be able, you better be willing to compromise. You know, this is, we're not going to, we're not going to sit there and put people to be eaten by the lions um, just to, just to satisfy someone's, you know, ego or, 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 or beef that they might have with somebody else. Yeah, um, you know, the truth is more important than that. Uh, this is not about, uh, see, I told you so, or, or, or being vindicated. This, this is about having a conversation that's, a, that, that can affect all of humanity. And, and we have to be willing to, to set aside some of that, uh, if you will, um, and understandably so, you know, you've got lots and lots of decades worth of of people covering this up. I know there's a lot of animosity, resentment as a result of that by people saying, you know, you've been lying to us for all this time, but but we got to be willing to put that aside if we really want to move forward, in my opinion. You're referring to animosity from the general public or animosity from some of these wolves? No, no, general referenced? public who, who, who want their pound of flesh because people have been covering this topic up for too long, knowing that it's real and lying to the American people. Potentially, how I, long I is too long? When you, potentially, is it centuries? Is it decades? Well, you know, there's information that goes. Well, I live here in Wyoming, and I live next to uh, members of the Crow Nation. Um, and if you've ever had a chance to to talk and really engage with Indigenous people, first of all, they're very very private. Um, two. Um, they have an incredibly rich history. Their 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 oral oral traditions and, and oral history doesn't go back a few hundred years. Um, it goes back millennia. In fact, when when Europe was facing its dark ages and 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 mankind almost went extinct in the European continent, and we were burning water books, filled. Um, you know, indigenous people over here were experiencing a golden era. Um, that wasn't the case over here. And the way they look at nature, the way they look at um, this topic, UAP, is not like we look at it through Western eyes. Um, in fact, they don't view it as a threat at all. In fact, they don't view it even as paranormal. They, they view it as, as normal, as part of, the, of, of nature, uh, their natural environment, as real as the, the lakes and the sky and the trees on the mountains are. Um, and it's just accepted as part of, part of the greater universe. And you know, I, th I think there's some beauty there. Um, you know they're not held hostage by their by their fears. Um, in fact, they they embrace it, uh, and and that goes to show that that you know you don't have to view this topic as an either or. It doesn't have to be viewed as a threat, or as uh, you know um, some sort of of um, saving uh, opportunity for our species. Um, it could just be a natural part of our existence. Um, again, do I subscribe to that? I don't know, but I certainly, I, I certainly think it's another way, another perspective that we should consider. Um, if that is the case and, and they're right, then we've been dealing with this for millennia. I can tell you that um, having a chance to talk to some people in the Vatican, you know, they describe these, these 
it, flaming Roman shields in the sky that would follow them from, from battlefield to battlefield, what they call the eclipus, which is the shape of the Roman shield. Um, you know, that's documented. That's there. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, I haven't read it from Jacques Vallée, uh, but from my understanding, Jacques Vallée even wrote a little bit about that. Um, but I've, I've seen that evidence myself. There, there is there is documentation of these strange things in the sky going back a long, long time. So I don't think it's necessarily modern. Um, maybe our understanding is is a little bit more advanced and maybe consider that modern. But I don't think we're dealing with a new phenomenon. I think we may be dealing with a new recognition uh, and perhaps hopefully at some point a new understanding. But I don't think this is a new phenomenon to mankind. I think we've been faced with this phenomenon for quite some time. You mentioned millennia, which is thousands of years. I'm wondering, potentially tens of thousands, potentially millions, or do you think it's cut off around 9,000 or so? Well, that's, that's hard to tell because we only as a species, Homo sapiens sapiens, have been around roughly for 100,000 years. And we only really gotten into written language in the last five, 6,000 years, really. Um, and been gone from, you know, uh, hunter gatherers to more of an agrarian type society, organized society, which is if you take a hundred thousand years and you compare the last 5,000 years, really only the five, 5% 5 of our entire time rummaging around on this planet has been in somewhat of a civilized fashion. Um, you know, and then if you look at that to the context of it's been, you know, only in the last, you know, thousand years, 2000 years, we, we understood, you know, the, Archimedes steam engine, right? And really didn't even fully appreciate it until the Industrial Revolution just a couple hundred years ago. So now you're talking at, you know, 0.2% of mankind's time on Earth. Um, we, we've been industrialized, we've been civilized. So how much of our own history do we really know? Well, you know, we can go back 5,000 years pretty easily. Um, 8,000 years, things start to get a little murky, right? And anything much beyond that, uh, we really have no clue about. And the question is, have we as a species been aware of this phenomenon much longer? Well, let's look at what we do know. Um, you know, the general consensus is that the, the, the American population, let's say American, I mean United States, I mean North America, South America, Central American population, really began about 20,000 years ago with, uh, during the land bridge when you had a migration coming over the land bridge and, and settling this part of the planet. But in reality, it turns out now that a lot of scientists believe that there were many migrations and many migrations before that primary migration 20,000 years ago. In fact, there may have been multiple migrations going back, perhaps even 100,000 years ago. So um, is it possible that, that our, our society um, was aware of these things, maybe even interacted with these things in a certain fashion? I'm sure it's possible. Absolutely it's possible. I mean, most of our history, we have no idea about. You know, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like spending an entire day and having amnesia except for the last five minutes before you go to bed. You know, right. what the hell was I? What was I doing? What did I eat? Who did I speak to? What, what did I say? What I'm wondering is what you're referencing is written history, and I'm curious about archaeological evidence that you're aware ah, of so or that potentially you, exists. Interesting. Yeah, so let me give you a real-world example, and I'm not going to either defute, uh, refute or, or defend it, but again, I live here in Wyoming, um, and there is a, a legend here called the Little People of the Paiori Mountains. Um, and for generations, the, the indigenous people have reported uh, what appeared to be this fearsome pygmy warrior tribe of humanoid type creatures that lived in the mountains. And for many, many, many years, it was completely um, considered a myth. myth. Folklore, uh, right. Yeah. Folklore. And it turns out that scientists began uncovering um, artifacts up in the mountains that uh, to some degree reinforced the notion that there was some sort of uh, small hominoid type creature uh, living in the mountains. Um, they found uh, small tools, they found, you know, small bones um, that appeared to be, be, be coming from some, you know, human, human, human like creature. Now, I, I don't know, I don't know the details uh, thoroughly. I haven't had a chance to really, really explore it or, or study it. But that part is true um, that, that people are now beginning to look back and say, well, wait a minute, um, is that possible? Because we're starting to find archeological evidence. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting here. I, I can walk up into the Bighorn Mountains 
and they're pulling out spearheads, spearheads uh, that are 11,000 years old. Now think about that for a minute, 11,000 years old. If that spearhead could talk, what people did it come from? What were they hunting? What did this place look like? You know, environments change in the blink of an eye. Look at the Sahara Desert in 5,000 years. You know, there was a lot of wildlife living in the Sahara region uh, before it became a desert. And, and that was in recent human history, by the way. We were inhabiting the planet when that happened. There are, are drawings on the side of rock walls that illustrate uh, um, all alligators, uh, crocodiles, if you will, and, and, and animals that live not just on the savanna, but in the wetlands, um, all cohabitating there. So, so this earth is very dynamic. Um, every time we have a, you know, for us, it seems like a long time, but every time we have an ice age, every roughly 10, 15,000 years, the entire topography of, of earth changes, the climate changes, animals change, people change, right? Um, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's very possible that, that there is potentially some sort of archeological evidence. The question is, would we recognize it if we saw it? And that's another big, big question we have to ask ourselves. You know, um, let me ask you this as a scientist, Kurt. If I said to you, um, Kurt, you have a task. Um, you can make it out of whatever you want, any material you want. Your goal is to, in a million years, you have to create something now that will last a million years to prove you were here. What would you do? How would you do it? Think about it. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Let's do, let's let's. I, I love you, man, but we're gonna we're gonna have this mental exercise right now. I think it's important. And by the way, it's not a trick question, and I'm, I'm not playing gotcha. Just, but would you give me just some examples that you might throw out there to say, okay, I'm, I would make something out of this or out of that. There are some meta materials that seem to be harder than diamond. So whatever is our hardest material, it would be made out of that. Also, just so you know, I don't classify myself as a scientist. I I'm more of a hobbyist, let's say. So that's what I would do. Sure. So you'd find some sort of hard material that would outlast just about anything else on Earth, right? Where would you put right. that material? Where, right. where would you put right. it? Orbit is one place. Okay. And hopefully a non-retrograde orbit, right? So geosynchronous and hopefully nothing would perturb it. In a million years, chances are something would, but okay, hypothetically in orbit, good. Um, you know, here on Earth, it's really hard to make anything that lasts more than a few thousand years you can even make the pyramids and look at them now and say wow those things are five thousand years old and you know they don't look so great and probably in another five thousand years they're not going to look good at all and, and they might last eventually till a hill of you might have a, a little hill of sand in a hundred thousand years but that's going to be about it and that's made out of rock right mount mushmore same thing it's going to be gone in in ten thousand years you won't probably even recognize it. it'll be too worn um even mountains in millions of years become deserts right uh, time moves on. Uh, then you have the subduction zones of Earth that eventually, if you wait long enough on the, on the surface of the planet, it all gets recycled anyways. It's all going to get you know sucked down into the mantle and, and get spit out the other end and, and as new land. So, so nothing is indelible on this planet. It's it's constantly changing. Okay, I'm going to turn old Lou off here for a second. Looks like we're getting we're getting close here to uh, being stopped out. Well, there we go. We're above a hundred now. I'm going to give it just a second here. These bounce around a bit. So to get out of this, we will need to get out like at 180. I'm going to give it just a second here. Okay, I'm going to get out. Let's get the F out. It's my favorite strategy. Okay, so let's see. 185. We probably get 185 there. Whoop. Okay, so we got it at 185. Right there. Let me go to the other account and get out of that one. So let's try to get the same price, 185 on this. Create duplicate order. Oh. 
shit, I forgot about that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we got out at 185 on that one. So that is, we wind up with $105 loss. I'm going to go back to my other account, my main account here that we're doing this on. And it's the same here. So we're out at $185. $105. Okay. So let's fill in our excel sheet real quick on this one okay so here is our excel sheet for today so this is kind of like round two all this up here this was part of our original test like our our one month test 20 trading days so i want to uh, we can keep these totals going but i want to keep uh i want to kind of separate it a little bit so using my fancy extravagant excel sheet skills i'm going to just kind of move this down a bit there and then i'll leave a, like a blank line in here this will be like just kind of a separation line between the two months the two 20 day periods so i'll go here and so today is the eighth one eight 24 and today was a loser we lost 105 bucks on this one darn it i have to recalculate these i think just do that now so we'll come down here we'll say calculate so 975 in wins 375 in losses after today darn it um and then the total at risk 420 and oh the time and trade it's about it's about 65 minutes i think 60 and that's it. Now, today was the first day where I tried to have two accounts going and I totally forgot. I mean, I haven't traded in that small account for so long that I totally forgot that there's this thing called the pattern day trading rule. And I don't even remember the exact, all the rules to it, but it looks like there was a, a little alert that popped up when I tried to exit out of, or when I did exit out of that, uh, that credit spread on the smaller account. So I need to see what that means. It kind of throws a potentially throws a wrench into things. I totally forgot about that, but it's like you can't trade. It's like you can't trade two or three days. You can't open and close the same position in the same day, like two or three days out of five or something. So I wonder if there's ways there's there's ways around that. I've I saw some weird fancy tricks that actually would be a good video to make. It would be perfect for this because this, maybe that's that's a solution. But I wonder what the solution. There's got to be solutions out there. I can't believe that. Uh, folks aren't playing zero DTE options and everyone that plays them like on a day basis where they open and close, they have to have like a account like $25,000 or more in it. That doesn't seem right. I mean, what's everyone out there doing? Which would be, which is a great point. If you can, if you know, please put it in the comments. That would be super helpful. And I'll to, like do some, maybe I'll call Thinkorswim. I'll probably call Thinkorswim, see if I'm in trouble. See what that, is, am I going to jail? Am I going to prison? I broke the pattern day trading rule. No, to no, see what that really means. Like hopefully it doesn't, hopefully there's no big problems now. I thought I remember them saying they'll, they'll lock you out of your account for us like a certain amount of time or something, or you have to put more money in there. So I'm going to call Thinkorswim right now and see what that is but i got to figure out going forward how we're going to deal with that because this needs to be able to be traded uh, in a smaller account we got to trade this thing in a smaller account so i'm going to call thinkorswim real quick all right let's call these guys let's see how much trouble i'm in i hope i'm not going to jail for this welcome to td ameritrade to hear about the dates when t please enter the social thank you for calling td ameritrade this is scott lijek speaking Hi. Yeah, I just have a question on an account. I that's a smaller account. I haven't traded it for a while, but I was trying to get out of the one today. I got some sort of alert, but I think it has to do with pattern day trading rule, probably. So oh yeah, let's take a look. Uh, what's the account number? All right, so let's see here. Let's get to the bottom of what's going on. Okay. Yeah, margin. Yes. Let me take a look at how many day trades we've already done. Because with margin being on the account under 25,000, the system then calculates how often you're doing round trips. Where you buy and sell same day, you can do up to three in a rolling five business day period and not be considered a pattern day trader. But if you do a fourth round trip, then you get classified as a pattern day trader 
and you're playing by a new set of rules, which means that you have to have a minimum of 25000 if you want to buy and sell on the same day. Now, if you're under 25000 you can't do any round trips, no buying, selling same day. If you do, then the account gets restricted for 90 days unless you deposit or remove the classification for a once-in-a-lifetime. I guess... Before I continue, any any questions just about the overall rule? Uh, no, I under, I think I think I understand all that. I, I guess the question is is um, just because I'm I'm used to the other account where I haven't had to deal with this, and you know I forgot all about this. I haven't traded this account this way. So a, a, so it's no more than did you say no more than three round trips in a five day period? Correct. You could do up to three, but once you hit three, you're you're out because then if you do a fourth one. That puts you over the limit. Just it, hold it at least overnight, because in the following day you can close it. It's not a round trip because you're not buying and selling on the same calendar date. So just be aware of that. It's rolling a five rolling business day. Right. Holidays don't count. Okay, got it. Now is that the same underline? Like, can I can I open say a spy and if I had a IWM on close that on the same day and does that not count or what, what is actually a round trip on the same, the same trade basically on the same underline? Correct. Same trade. And, and if it's a different underlying, sure you can open that up. But then if you close that underlying today, now you've opened and closed the same position. Right. So think of it as that way. But in, in one scenario, let, let me give you this where say you opened up these, these, uh, January 8th, so they wouldn't expire today. Say you just open up as SPX and it expires at the end of the week mm-hmm. and on the 12th, and you open it up today at this 470, 47.30 strike. And then tomorrow, you open up an SPX with the same expiration on the 12th, but you open up the 47.25. And then later on Tuesday, you close the 47.30. That's not a round trip, even though the underline is the same because that strike price is different because the 47.30 was opened right. today and then closed the following. So it, it's it's same security um, all, all with every single detail. Um, if you, you know, if you open up a January 9th 47.30 today, it's not going to really affect what your your current position is because it's it has one factor that's different, the expiration. Right, got it. And so now that I know that, I'll be watchful of that. But let's say, will the, will the system not allow me to do that? It, it's not going to stop you. The most it's going to do is give you these alerts. You're going to get those reminders. When you when you hit con- continue and you're about to hit confirm and send, it's going to say just as a reminder. And then if you pass that, it's basically that's the system saying, hey, don't forget, if you close this today, and do a round trip, you're going to be classified. Yeah. And you need 25000 So it's not going to prevent you from doing it, but it is going to remind you of what you're doing. Okay, well, you heard it from the horse's mouth, think or swim horse. Um, that's the deal with that. So that, I wonder what that means. I got to like think about this. Like, I wonder if we do, I got to schedule them out maybe, like do one every other day where there is some trick where you can like, you can like lock it off or something. But again, if anyone out there knows, there's got to be people out there who are dealing with this problem, opening and closing zero DTE trades on the same day with a small account. So if you, if anyone out there knows, please uh, leave them in the comments. That would be super helpful or like a link to some place that will show me, show me how to handle that. What's the best way to deal with a small account on zero DTE options, opening and closing on the same day. And I'll share it with everyone. This is like, I guess this is probably a problem that could come up quite a bit. So keep watching, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, we'll see how this all pans out, how to handle this kind of a thing. All right, so if you'd like to follow me on this trade or any of my other ones, including any trades now, I'm trying to figure out this pattern day trading rule problem. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel or you can join me on my website. I'll leave a link to my website in the description below. Head on over there and sign up for my free email newsletter. When you sign up, you'll get a welcome email from me. Just reply back to that welcome email. And in the body, give me the solution to this pattern day trading thing. How do we handle that with a small account trading zero DTE options? All right, that's it for today and talk to you next time.